Right, here's a reminder of our 2019 crystal ball predictions for the sporting year. These ones are particularly centred on rugby and the Six Nations. Only one of us saw the uh, weekend's events coming. Have a look. Wales are going to win the Grand Slam. Or Wales are going to win the Six Nations. I don't know about the Grand Slam. Um, I think Wales uh, have been quietly over the last 18 months giving opportunities to countless players. They had a brilliant November series, which they never do. Um, Gatland has been no doubt looking at this uh, non-stop hagiography of Joe Schmidt going, uh, hang on a second, I'm the best New Zealand coach coaching outside of New Zealand and I have never once been linked with the All Blacks job. What the hell? Mm. But he's going to wait for the World Cup to do the ambush. I think he's going to have a slaloming run this year. A few oh. injuries coming in. Uh, half penny I read this week is out for the first important player from Aussie for the first few weeks. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they actually now have enough strength in that to be able to deal with uh, Lee Halfpenny missing. Just Wales. <laughs> We've moved on from the Six Nations. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'll win both of them. But I think they might win both of them. <laughs> right. They're more likely, I think that um, there's a chance that they don't win the Six Nations, but I think Wales are my dark horses slash this is the time for this Wales. But dark horses that might make a semi final is no, no, to I win think it, that, uh, I think that, like, the institutional memory of what uh, this group have been through over the last while. <laughs> I just can't believe you actually believe Wales are going to win the Six Nations at the World Cup. What are Wales it's for the World Cup? Like, I don't think it, it, you I, can't, I, I, can't I don't, think, I don't think it's the worst shout ever don't in that. Dick on. No, but I can get you to quote it. In that, to where is our no need to be a dick on. That was it. What, They're not going to uh, win the World Cup. What, what, what did you have to say, Owen? Have a look. Well, England coming to Dublin means it's, it's Ireland's easy year. They're going to win the Six Nations. They're probably not going to win the Grand Slam just because I think our card is marked by everybody. So where do they come a cropper then? At Principality Stadium. They're going to lose to Wales. And it's such an easy answer, but there's a reason why it's an easy answer. It's because like, when it comes to our easy year, like we've obviously managed to do it in, in 2009, getting the win there on the last day of the campaign. And they're every sort of element you speak of in terms of comparing man for man uh, to, of Ireland to any other team in the Six Nations. We are clearly the superior team. I just can't see how how we can lose more than one game. And I think that one game is going to be on the road. I, I don't see us well, losing that's, in that's that That's the last game. So for the second year running, you're saying we'll have this thing wrapped up before we even get to the final yes. game? Yes. Wow. Yes. I think Ireland will win the Six Resident Nations. Resident rugby man. Wow. Yeah. How'd you... Uh, well, how'd, that, how'd that work out for you? That, that's not me speaking there. I mean, it's exactly well, consistent I, with what you said I, uh, to taunt the England fans that inspired the England team to play so well. Okay, so maybe the outcome was different to what I predicted. But in terms of the actual thrust of what I was saying, how much of it is definitely wrong? Uh, I think that we are not... Better team than everybody else in the Six Nations? I think we... Are we? I th I on, still, I, on the I, basis I, of all the evidence so far? I still think we're the best team in the Northern Hemisphere, for sure. Um, for sure. Very, very confident in that. So we're going to beat Wales this weekend because the best teams win the big games against the other good teams. I've got a good feeling about Wales this weekend, for sure. What's, what's that good feeling? The that like it's going to be a nice match and we lose or that we're going to win? Well, the thing is, you've heard, you've heard me say it there. I thought at the start of the year that we were going to lose in Cardiff. So like, I'm, I'm not backing down here by saying that we you may not win. You also said that we'd have it wrapped up by the time we got to Cardiff. So I got one game wrong. <laughs> I got one game wrong. We got beaten at home by England. Okay. It happens. We like. We, I, I didn't expect England, first of all, to be as good as they were. Definitely. Like, well, I, I can definitely revise my opinion on that. England are back. I didn't expect them to be back uh, uh, with as much vengeance as they were. Uh, and second of all, I didn't expect Ireland to be as bad as they were. Just because of w of one sort of period in the last eighteen months where Ireland have gone through a really really bad period, doesn't make my whole argument suddenly collapse. That's a, that's, that's a lot of recency bias going on in your takedown, in my opinion, there. Except that I had the same opinion before the competition started when I said that Wales were going to win the Grand Slam. But I'm sticking by my opinion as well. On, on terms of the thrust of my arguments, of course I can't stick by the opinion that Ireland are going to win the championship now. Because but that we're so superior. Easy we're, we're vastly, this is our easy year. We're, we're vastly we're superior. We're vastly? I mean, this is our easy year. I think we're better than everybody else in the Six Nations. It is our easier year. Like, it is by definition our easy year. Of course it is. How much better than England are we at the minute? Where's the evidence for it? The, like, I mean, the gap's obviously closed in terms of my expectation of where we are in relation to England. I think, we, we, I think Ireland is still the second best team in the world. I'm, I'm clinging on to that belief, and it may, it may be by my fingertips at this point. And then it's whoever you're having yourself for world number three. That may be England. So is that a big gap? 
course it's not. Or like that gap, that gap is closed considerably. Are you are you going to force me into a position where I backtrack on my entire argument that Ireland are better than everybody else in the Six Nations? No, because what are you going on? What One defeat. We, what if we finish third? What if we lose two games? Well, we can have this conversation again next week. So you think we're going to lose this weekend, right? My, that was my initial thought at the start of the year. I think that the way things have shifted after last weekend... We're going to win. I'm quietly confident going into this weekend. I'm not, like, I'm, I'm not going to be as brash and as, and as wrong as I was before the England game. Well, that's the whole point, if you're going to, if you're going to you know... But ultimately, I'm, I'm just, for the point of that, I'm not going to revise my entire opinion, which was at the start of the year, that I, deep down I agreed with you that Wales are an outstanding team. And going to Cardiff is always a very, very tricky place to go. I was laughing at you for saying that they're going to win the World Cup as well. It doesn't look so stupid now, though, does it? Like, the All Blacks don't play in the Six Nations. No. The All Blacks are going to win the World Cup. But Wales have been missing several of their best players, and they have established massive strength and depth, which you're going to need over the, the course of the tournament. Like... Would you give Wales or Ireland a better chance of winning the World Cup at this point? Have Ireland not been in a very kind of painful way establishing, really, really establishing that strength and depth over the last couple of years? Because we spoke at the start of the tournament about all these different players that are available to Ireland. You don't know what the depth really is until they're actually put into the mixer and put into a high-pressure environment and put into a position where they're going to lose games. But So we've seen, what was it, 60 minutes of... Joey Carberry at 10, who's our, who's our second choice 10, and who's our second choice 9? How much have we actually seen of anybody being given an opportunity for 9 and 10, which are the key positions well, that like we said at the start of the tournament we need to see over the course of this tournament what happens if 9 and 10 don't play well. We saw what happens when they don't play well, we don't win, mm. and, or we struggle against teams who are markedly inferior than us. And um, we've got really lucky that uh, Dan Levy is back this week because... We don't really have that much strength and depth, it turns out, particularly in positions which are um, particularly attritional. So, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think uh, I, I disagree with that on uh, 9 and 10. Like, Joey Carberry was having the best calendar year of his life so far. Granted, we were only a month into it before he got injured. Kieran Marmion was at scrum half when he beat the All Blacks in Dublin last year. Like, are we that... Is the, the situation that muddied? That have, have we seen them play together in a key, you're, key match? We haven't. Like you're, you're, you're basing that all on this year's Six Nations, which, let's face it, has not been a great one for Ireland. It's the most recent relevant information. But it's not the only relevant information. No, like, I mean, you know how highly I rate Joey Carberry. It's just I'd like to see them... I, it, it was clear that they needed to give him some game time early in the competition, and they didn't do that. I agree. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. I, I agree with you. But I, I still think... We're more likely than Wales to win the World Cup at this stage. Yes. Okay. I disagree.